Hi there friends, this is Patrick Sarge Murray once again here with Travel to Learn and I'm here to give you a quick how-to breakdown on something that you might find pretty handy. Now, we all love going to zoos, right? I mean, goodness knows I do. And lately, everybody when they're at zoos, what do you see? They all have their camera phones out or they have their point and clicks out trying to take as many pictures as they can of animals, right? I mean, why wouldn't they, right? It makes the experience all the more fun. But you, you hear people from time to time thinking, well, I wish I had a little better equipment here and there to take this better shot so I could take this better picture of this particular animal. And so that's what I'm here to do, is to give you the breakdown on the best camera equipment to take with to the zoo so you can maximize the enjoyment of your visit. Now here's, here's first and foremost what we need, okay? Start off with some sort of DSLR camera body, okay? Now again, this, is, this whole how-to video is premised on the idea that you have some sort of DSLR to begin with in the first place, okay? Uh, this is for the more serious shutter bugs. If you want to get into photography and you want to figure out the best way to use a good DSLR for this kind of excursion, this is going to be a handy video for you as well. So start off with a camera body of some sort, of your choice. I just happen to have a Canon here, but if you prefer Nikon, great. If you prefer Olympus, great. If you prefer Sony, great. Just start off with some sort of DSLR digital camera body. Okay, now what I first start off with is some sort of telephoto lens like this right here, okay? Now this telephoto lens that I have has a pretty long zoom here. It ranges from 70 millimeters to 300 millimeters. And that covers a pretty good gamut for a lot of outdoor uh, exhibits, a lot of animals in, in, in the out, outdoor exhibits. Uh, it, it, it helps you focus it pretty closely on a lot of those types of animals. It doesn't matter if they're, you know, peacocks all the way down to, all the way over to, you know, your larger animals too. It doesn't matter if they're some sort of like impalas, for example, or, or, or you, you can focus up closely on, on even elephants and rhinos if you want. Uh, any sort of big cats, I mean, this is the really good lens to have outdoors, okay? Uh, if you don't have a telephoto lens, your, your, your optimal experience photographing the zoo is going to be very, very much, uh, very much hobbled, shall we say, very much compromised. So start with some sort of telephoto lens, again of your choice, but make it some sort of telephoto zoom lens preferably so that you have some sort of, of, of flexibility in terms of focus, focal range. But that's not all, okay? Because there, there's one or two other lenses that you will also need in order, in order to really maximize your, 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 your zoo visiting pleasure. Here's a, an important go-to lens of mine as well, a macro lens, okay? Now this happens to be a 100 millimeter macro lens, but again, it doesn't have to be this exact same model. It can be a similar model, just so long as you have a macro lens. You're thinking, why a macro lens? Couple of reasons. Zoos these days, the good ones at least, not only have great animals on display, but they give you a whole environmental holistic experience with great horticulture, right? There'll be cool plants that you see on display, cool flowers you, you see on display. They're worth photographing too. And being the incurable shutter bug I am, I even go even further than that because if you hang around the cool plants long enough, you'll see really cool insects that land on the plants and you can photograph them at various zoos as well. And that just triples your pleasure right there. So it's always handy to have a good macro lens on display for that reason alone. In addition, this is an awesome lens to use on the indoor exhibits, where you see a lot of animals in terrariums and you can get really close up on them and get some really nice detail shots. This is especially handy for uh, reptile houses to photograph all the cool frogs and salamanders and lizards and nice close up detail shot of snakes and all that good stuff. So a tel telephoto lens for the outdoors, have a macro lens for a lot more detailed stuff, be it the horticulture, but also uh, for uh, indoor exhibits like reptile houses as well. Now lastly, to cap it all off, what you want is to some sort of good all-purpose lens. Uh, this just so happens to be a 28 to 135 millimeter lens. Uh, but again, it doesn't have to be this necessarily. Others would prefer, say, a 24 to 105 millimeter lens, something along those lines. Now, why, why, what, what, what makes this come in handy? Well, a couple of things. What if you're trying to photograph really, really big mammals, like, you know, giraffes, you know, really tall, right? Or other large mammals, like uh, a hippo, or a rhino, or elephants, 
or something along those lines and they've gotten so close to you and there's there's a great opportunity for a great shot but you can't zoom out with your telephoto lens all the way what are you going to do well that's where a lens like this comes in pretty handy also this lens also works great on indoor exhibits as well uh, maybe you don't want to necessarily get a, a close-up detail shot of certain reptiles on display this is going to be that great lens to where you get the whole specimen in a nicely cropped photograph anyhow okay so this comes super hand this comes in super handy on uh, indoor exhibits as well now there might be also occasions where you're in a very low light setting that's where this flash unit comes in handy again this is going to be more for the indoor exhibits obviously obviously than the outdoor exhibits unless of course you're doing some outdoor macro photo work and you need an extra flash to supplement your uh, up close detailed uh, you know you know high f-stop uh, high f-stop uh, photos you're trying to take as well uh, but, but yeah believe me and believe me when I say that uh, the the flash unit this this happens to be a, a Canon model 580 ex2 that comes in really really handy as well is it going to ruin your day if you don't have one oh no not necessarily but is it gonna uh, be a huge help in, in a lot of cases you bet it is so the so what you see right here are the basic ingredients okay again basic camera body with a telephoto lens a macro lens an all-purpose walk-around lens and a flash unit now you're asking yourself how am, I, how am I supposed to carry all of these well what I use in this case is this this backpack that I use it's specially made for just such a purpose you can put the camera and the uh, telephoto zoom lens in like so. There's a nice compartment over here for the flash unit. I can stick my all-purpose walk-around lens in, in a nice compartment for it back here. And I can stick my macro lens right there. There are a number of different models of backpacks specifically made for photographers, much like this. Uh, this, uh, this is, um, this happens to be a, uh, um, the model is a flip side, uh, 300 uh, made by low pro uh, low pro makes some pretty cool stuff uh, the, but, but again there are other companies that make similar backpacks as well uh, you can get these through uh, camera shops or uh, there are also uh, online uh, company uh, companies that would sell backpacks like this online you can just Google a camera backpack and see what your options are uh, you, you combine all this together and uh, you're loaded for bear to really maximize your pleasurable experience in exploring and photographing and appreciating all the awesome animals that are on display at a zoo. Uh, so that's all we have for now. Uh, see, what, see about uh, ch checking out this equipment. Uh, see about uh, trying it out if you have the opportunity to do so. And you'll see what I mean in terms of how handy this can be and how much more enjoyable it will make your next visit to the zoo. So that's all for now. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And until the next time, keep exploring, keep growing, Keep discovering and keep learning.